Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video we are going to try out another crazy idea with the Orion carrier plane. In this case it is going to try to carry SLS. Well, not exactly carry it because we will need to light the RS-25s on the SLS core in order to make this work but it is going to replace the SRBs on SLS. Now, if we were going to use two of the Orion carrier planes to do this, uh, that would be trivial because I've already tried out SLS with the Raptor 9 rocket, if you will, the Unix rocket, and uh, that has nine Raptor engines just like the Orion carrier plane does. So we know that would work. The question is whether uh, this particular setup will work or not. Now, we're only doing the ICPS with this, and of course Orion at the top. Note that the launch escape system can still work just fine. Uh, so uh, if it works, it works. Uh, that would still work out. And we are set up like this. I don't know what exactly the fueling level on the service module ought to be. Mm, we're totally fueled up right now, but it doesn't seem to have a very high mass. So yeah, I mean, it wasn't the most the heaviest service module ever so we'll see we'll see what we should do with that but currently we're launching out of Brownsville to see if the Orion carrier plane can get up to the same speed that it needs to in order to be uh, in order to get to a landing at Cape Canaveral but I'm thinking with this maybe the better setup would be to launch it out of Cape Canaveral and have the Orion carrier plane land in like wallops. The problem with that is that we don't actually have a runway at wallops right now because the runways are where the space center is except for the shuttle runway that is at the cape because that is specially placed. So I might have to place some special runways uh, to facilitate the recovery of the Orion carrier plane elsewhere using Kerbal Constructs but that is a project I have not embarked upon yet. So, as far as stress is concerned, well, normally the Orion carrier plane is carrying about 140 tons on its back. Its back. Um, the good thing about this is that once these engines are on, uh, technically the surplus mass on this side, because SLS can't bear its own weight, it needs the boosters normally, uh, the surplus mass on this side is about the same. It's about 140, it's, you know, in the same ballpark. So the actual stress on the Orion carrier plane won't be any different. That's a positive. Of course, uh, there, there are other directions. That's just in terms of weight. That's one direction. There are other stresses, so it would have to be braced properly. But yeah, it's a little bit tenuous in some of the other directions in terms of gust and all. But yeah, let's try it out. I mean, we don't have to worry about that in Kerbal Space Program anyway. It is yet another interesting sort of contraption, isn't it? I think some people didn't understand how big the Orion carrier plane was, by the way. So it is fairly humongous when you look at it this way. Uh, if you consider SLS to be humongous too, of course. So yes, let us try this out. Throttle up SAS on. Note the 2,338 tons. It's lighter than the SLS stack, but then the propellant is more efficient. Uh, you know, because it's methane and oxygen and everything. And we, but we do have a 1.15 sea level thrust to weight ratio. So it's got to be pretty slow off the pad. It's tough to tell whether it is going to make it or not. We will find out. So, ignition. We have to wait for the RS 25s. Maybe we should light the RS 25s first and then light the. Oh, there's a bit of a drift. Well, here it goes. Not as bad on the thrust weight ratio as I was expecting. We still got a lot of drift though. I'm telling you this Orion carrier plane is the most useful thing in a jig if we could get a few. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna have the speed it needs to get to Florida at all. We'll see whether the rest of the stack can do its business, though. By the way, I put the tile end opposite the the shuttles, the, the SLS stack, and that's to protect the tiles, I guess. Not that this is like the shuttle or anything; it doesn't do a full re-entry. 
Of course, normally the Orion carrier plane carries stuff on its back, so that fits too. But I did think about putting it the other way around. For aerodynamic purposes. Well, we're well into launch, so the RS-25 should be able to continue on. But, yeah, we're not up to the same speeds that we normally would like to be at. But, off goes that. We didn't even reserve any fuel in that this time. Uh, I don't think I want the main core end skirt happening. The launch escape system can happen. We're at 100 kilometers. Honestly, SLS is sort of OP for carrying ICPS right now, like this, anyway. Maybe we should just try EUS instead. So yeah, the trajectory of the carrier plane has it ending up here, which is like, not very far. Uh, New Orleans, mainly, maybe, if we add it up there. It, well, bad glideaways, so probably be able to get to the panhandle of Florida. But uh, yeah, we could see up the coast and see. But of course, that's not the ideal launch trajectory for SLS at all. But if it's only carrying ICPS, that's not too bad. It probably doesn't matter anyway. Um. But yeah, then there'll be some landing sites available, of course. If we just tugged a little bit closer to the coast and have a trajectory like this, that would also be a little bit more useful. Okay, alright. That'll be a little bit lopsided. But there we have it, 357 by 174. Plenty of Delta V remaining. Um, don't know if there ought to be, but, uh, ICPS adapter, I guess. Oh, that's not what I wanted to have happen there. I don't like ICPS anyway. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, hold on. Maybe we can, okay. There we go. 2,902, we could probably underfuel the service module a little bit to make sure that it's the only stage to do the translunar injection, but then... Or, on the other hand, we could just use the fuel from the surface module to finish translunar injection. That depends on which way you think is more safe, I guess. But yeah, let's try EUS. I mean, it makes me feel bad that we're leaving so much fuel behind in the core, and also we totally failed to make sure that the orbits, we should have finished up orbit with the ICPS, I suppose. So, we're switching launch sites to the Cape, and Wallops is right there. So, we're gonna see if the space plane could potentially get there eventually. It's a shorter distance than from Brownsville over to the Cape, but we were sort of... Well, the default trajectory was ending up here. It probably would glide to, like, here, so maybe this distance would be about right. But then we have the inclination to deal with, so... Yeah, that's not... Wonderful. I don't know exactly the heading, but I'm assuming it's like ISS like heading to get to Wallops, so we will see. Okay, so here we are the Orion carrier plane with the full SLS with the EUS and all that. The thrust weight ratio 1.12, so not actually that different in a way, but now the Orion carrier plane is gonna get even less far, so <laughs> that's a bit of a problem. Right, because it's carrying more. Maybe we, could, uh, maybe if I could turn off some of the, its engines, but that's gonna be really inefficient. We didn't get up to like a really high thrust weight ratio anyway. But if we turn off some of its engines, it'll last longer, and then it'll be partly carried by the RS twenty fives for a further distance. Not that that's necessarily a good thing. But on its on the bright side, its dry mass is less than that of the SRBs because the SRBs are basically a one huge thrust chamber. So they they have a lot of extra mass there because they have to contain all that. Uh, this is just the flying fuel tank for the most part. So yep, all right. Well, we'll see. This is what testing is about. Throttle up. SAS is on, 
ignition and launch. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, it's um, it is what it is. You're going. Ooh, don't be too vigorous. Going that ways. Again, two of the Orion carrier planes next to it would probably work just fine. And would probably be able to make the Florida landing. This is just a uh, more interesting thing. That would be heavier on the pad than SLS is though. So it'd be sort of like overkill. Well, it's a gentle ride up as far as this part is concerned. Max Q will not be too much Q. We're, we're only getting up to 2 G's right now, so... So our trajectory looks... Uh, it's like that. We need to be even steeper to get to Wallops. But we'll see. We'll, we'll keep it like this. Regular... Regular ISS trajectory. And see what it can do. I don't know. Oh, I forgot to turn off the engines. Uh, it should still have enough. Assuming it doesn't need its engines to... Boost in one direction or another. We will wait till space to release the launch escape system. Yeah, it's probably safest now anyway. Alright, off it goes. Uh, mostly this looks like exactly how it ought to be. In fact... We could have the Orion carrier plane ride along with this for a little bit. It seems to have quite a lot of Delta V, but maybe, maybe the... Like, cause I didn't write the configs for this mod, the realism overhaul configs. Maybe the tank is too light. I remember the tank being too light. I made my own SLS for the SLS wet workshop, and I made those heavier. So we'll we'll just assume that it has too much ability here. But at least we can say that the EUS would have enough delta v once it reaches orbit, cause normally it would finish orbit with this. Maybe we can just go to a higher inclination then. They'll have to time it right for their moon trip, but hey, there's NASA we're talking about here. Okay, well, Wallops is over there somewhere. Okay, separation. Ooh, yeah, that sometimes explodes. All right, ignition. I guess we can get rid of those fairings. Yeah, plenty of Delta V and all. That's not a problem. It's only carrying Orion after all. Should be able to carry much more than that. EUS. Okay, yeah, well, again, plenty of extra because we're not carrying its full load to the moon or anything like that. So, yeah, let's try and get closer to the coast, so, uh, steeper trajectory. I mean, we, we could probably, man we'll have to do an off-plane transfer to the moon, but that can be manageable. And then see where the Orion carrier plane could possibly land. I'm sure we have the margin for it, we'll just follow the Orion carrier plane down this time. Alright, again, I don't know the exact heading I should use, but we'll try, we'll try 30. And maybe we'll be going over land like that, I don't know. Uh, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And... Launch. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, no, I want 180. Roll 180. Oh, shoot. Uh... <laughs> uh, oh, no, oh, no. Uh... Well, the vector's gotten straight up thanks to that roll. Okay... I could try placing the KSC pad at Wallops and still launching from pad 39B or something, but launching from pad 39B is sometimes dangerous, so... Uh, yeah, we'll try this for now. 
But as an alternative, if we want to make it easy for getting that runway at Wallops, we could just set the KSC at Wallops and use the Katniss Cape Canaveral pads. I'm gonna try switching off some of the engines over here. Doesn't hurt the thrust weight ratio too much at this point. Okay, well, I'm gonna shut them all off. I'm gonna carry it a little bit until the apoapsis gets to 140. That's what I'll say. Seem to have enough juice. All right, separation. Okay, so surface. Due to the locations of the RCS thrusters, this doesn't roll very quickly. It's a very long thing, and the RCS thrusters are very close to the center line. Okay, well, the SLS is out of render range now. Okay, I think I see... No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, this is our trajectory. We're gonna have to make a left turn. Maybe we can land at, like, Newport News or something. Norfolk. Because, uh, uh, you know, Norfolk sort of juts out. <laughs> it's easier to get to. If we put a runway over here somewhere, it'd be easier. And some model left turn and wallop switches over here. But it depends how far we go now. Oh, we're already headed back down. Seems like it's overturning. Why are you overturning? Stop that. Yeah, those barrier islands at North Carolina. It was a sure convenient. <laughs> oh, nice runway at Kitty Hawk or something. Now, I'm going to a higher pitch than normal because this is being a little bit weird. I just want to make sure our nose is above the horizon. Okay, here come the G's. Not many G's compared to the normal trajectory for this, though, probably. Around 9-ish. Didn't even make severe rumbles about it. Gotta use atmospheric autopilot just so it doesn't wiggle so much, I think. Oh, our throttle is still up. Oops. Okay, well, that's very much trending towards land right there. Not quite as high up as I wanted with Norfolk and all, but so we're North Carolina bound right now. We've still got some gliding distance though. I mean, right now we're higher than airliners travel at, we're faster than an airliner. We fall much worse than an airliner, but we would expect like a hundred nautical miles at least like this. Uh, well, looking at this part of North Carolina, there isn't a whole lot around here. <laughs> no offense. Um, so... Yeah, that's... Right, it's, it's here. Norfolk is here. We would want to get up there somewhere. But it's mostly this alligator river bulge that we have here the alligator river national wildlife refuge area okay gears out slowing down so i guess we have to put a runway here there's no real runway here as far as i can tell from the maps and everything we're either gonna have to bring this further along or choose some other trajectory in terms of inclination, it would be better to try and head up, uh, head out of Brownsville and head closer to the Gulf Coast instead of coming over here. But honestly, if, if all we're carrying is Orion, it's not too bad. Go to a higher inclination. Maybe we should test it out with a uh, heavier payload on SLS. What we need is, like, a runway in the middle of the Atlantic. Not in the middle. I mean, you know, somewhere appropriately far out in the Atlantic. Um, no, a carrier is not sufficient. Not for this. 
it's actually physically got more area than the shuttle does but it's not too much heavier than the shuttle so in some ways it flies better as long as there's body lift it's got a nice curve to it as far as body lift is concerned okay all right so it can land somewhere uh we are there which is well, it depends how far in that is. Uh, so what actually, we, no, uh, that wasn't the, this is the Palmico, Pal, Pamli, Pamlico, Pamlico River. Okay, so we're close to a city called Washington. It's not that one. <laughs> okay, I got my rivers wrong. So we're south of the whole Alligator River National Refuge thing. That's over here. We, we only got to here. There's still basically nothing here. Sorry residents of this location um, uh, yeah but we're not that far off from Norfolk which is there I mean in the grand scheme of things as far as we've come we just need to get from here to over there if we had fitted this with jet engines maybe that would work out I'll try that some other time though we'll think uh, do you think this is a promising thing uh, can we say what's up with the SRBs you know can we just get rid of the SRBs and do this well, I'll leave it up to you. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I need to get rid of the food, water, and oxygen. I keep forgetting that. Uh, those are leftovers from when I wanted to have this be crude. I decided once I saw the G-forces on this that it better not be. But anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.